Hey folks, welcome back. Uh, I'm Battle Mode and I'm playing Field of Glory Empires, as you know. This is episode three. Uh, well, in this episode, I think what we need to do is we've got to think about where we're going to move next. We've just taken this area around Pontus, including uh, Pharmacia. We're getting some, we get, we're getting mostly farm buildings up here at the moment. Just trying to grow our population as big as possible. Uh, but because of this ability that we have to kind of eat up the decadence that you would normally get from taking Hellenic provinces, uh, I think it might be a good idea for us to find some provinces for us to take. So if we actually go to the um, ethnicities here, these are all um, Hellenic provinces, basically, these blue ones. Okay. And um, yeah, these are volcanic. So Lysimachos is volcanic. So we can take pretty much any of these. These are ones where we've got, you know, kind of like favorable ethnicity, essentially. Now, they're not all going to be like some of them are like only partially Hellenic look. But for the most part, it's all color coded. Um, so these are the places where it's kind of safe for us to take. Uh, you know, even, notice that even the parts of Egypt are going to be Hellenic. Um, so, yeah, I think what there's a couple that we can look at. There's, we've got this one here. Now, this is uh, Donatia, uh, sorry, uh, Tanaetis in Donatia. Now, at the moment, you just look. This is currently independent, and Scythia seem to be attacking Sarmatia. It looks like Scythia are attacking into Sarmatia here, or Sarmatia attacking into Scythia. Uh, it looks like those two are at war. Let's go to Diplomacy look. Yeah, those guys are at war, their relations are kind of low. So, we could probably take this away from Scythia. The only thing is, it, it might end up becoming a, you know, a bit of a problem for us, in the sense that these guys might want to fight us. Uh, however, it does have Amber. That's that's a nice thing. That That could actually be useful. What else could we got? We've got uh, Olbia here. Olbia also has Amber. Uh, that would be interesting as well. The only thing is that this one's a little bit closer to this kind of ongoing war between Sarmatia and Scythia, whereas this one's kind of very close to Sarmatia. Yeah, and it's it has got quite a lot of food. It's got one, two, three, four population. This one's got four population too. Uh, they've got an anchorage and a trading post up. Also an old crone hut. <laughs> this is a regional perk, a local site in the region with a positive effect on land output and development. Despite the marshes, local people have worked out how to live in this region. There's some elderly res residents are skilled at travel and finding food. This gives you food here. And it's uh, this is just a, you know, a little thing that allows you to get more food, essentially. Uh, so this is actually a bit of a better region, I'd say, Olbia here. Uh, Odessus would also be worth... Taking the problem is that this is Germanic. This one also is it is fifty percent Hellenic here, so we can we can take this. This is probably a better province actually. Yeah, this one actually look uh, the ethnicity is more like the national ethnicity is Hellenic, uh, so we could still take that one. National ethnicity here for Olbia is also Hellenic. Let's go and grab that one there. So what we need to do is we. Um, yeah, we've got enough cash to uh, uh, to fund the armies that we are using. Let's get these guys moving back here, and then we'll we'll send them up to Olbia. It's going to take three turns, and then they'll save the cost of sea. By the way, somebody in the comments was asking how the uh, boats work with regards to transporting your armies, and it's just automatic. It's one of those things that's kind of um, what's the word? It's uh, yeah, abstracted. By the by the game basically all right i don't think there's much else we need to do this turn so let's just roll it on so our pirate ship is going to go out they're going to go over to a, a byzantium see if they can uh, get us some money through pirating get some of the old yo ho ho and a bottle of rum on the go uh yeah we're dropping down in the cdr table a little bit here this will be because we just took that other Pop, uh, that other population center. So Lucas is proposing a trade deal. Let's have a look at that one. Let's have a look at the clauses of this deal. Okay, they're going to give us Persian skirmishers and they want metal. Um, we don't need our metal at the moment. Now we are we are producing five per turn, but we don't really have any way of using it until we've got the production. And if you have too much, it kind of causes problems, as you'll see. So what I might do is I just might go for a counter proposal. I don't want these units because I can't afford to keep them. Uh, they are good units, Persian skirmishes. Um, but what we'll do is... Let me get rid of that one. Can ask for cooperation. 
and let's give money. We've got two bargain points. Oh, they're saying a 10% chance of a, of a transaction there. So that's probably not going to happen. The only 15... Oh, they don't like the cooperation. That's the problem. We could probably get some money from, from them, though. Oh, they're not, they're not even liking that at all. Uh, they're, they're, they're up, there's a 4% chance they're not going to take this free metal. <laughs> Let's see if they'll do that. Let's see if we'll do that. 15% chance. Um, getting cooperation with Seleucos will be really, really good. Because that means that... If the Antigonids started with us, you know, oh, it would, it would also keep Seleucus off us, to be honest. So it might keep us safe. Let's let's propose that treaty. There's only a small there's only a small chance of it working. Uh, Byzantium was raided by Pontus, and uh, we were defeated, sadly. So let's have a look. Okay, yeah, we just need to recover our um, effectiveness here. We've actually got two more pirate ships to add to that fleet. Uh, the, our army, Pontus Army One, or the first Pontus Army, are going to head over to Albia as expected. Uh, we've new received. We've received a new, uh, a new regional decision. Gosh, I can't speak today. Sorry, folks. Uh, also, hemp field has been planted here, so that's good. We've got the hemp field up. What can we get next? Um, public works will be good. This is one that somebody in the co comments suggested. This is really good for being able to move around. That's absolutely true. Um, but I don't need it at the start of the game. Ranch would be good. This will produce cattle. And if I remember right, yeah, we're not getting... We don't. We need cattle here. So this would, this would actually give us extra food in all the areas that we've got farms. Now, I think these guys have got a farm up. But, yeah, they're trading it. So where are they trading it from? Where are they trading that from? Uh, I reckon it must be... I thought it was around here. Yeah, so there's a couple of places where we can trade where we can trade these from, look. They're not getting it from there. Where are they getting it from then? Oh, where have we got cattle? Cattle, cattle, cattle. Normally you can see the lines basically, so oh there we are. Okay, we're importing hemp. We're importing the uh, wool from there. Oh by the way, you do buy and sell between your own provinces. When you do that, then actually, even though it looks like you're losing money. You're actually gaining it in the other one. You'll see that, yeah, look, we're trading it out. So we're actually, uh, this is worth four gold, this trade, between these two provinces that we own. And uh, you'll see that these this, this province is losing two gold, but these guys are actually gaining four. So overall, we're getting a net gold, uh, net, a net income of two from that. Um, and that is going into the money here. So that's really, really cool. So you want to, you want to have enough trade going on in between your own nations as well. Let's see where this... So what are they? Uh, uh, actually, okay, they're trading olive oil. Where are you getting your cattle, cattle from? Down there. No, okay, we're trading. It looks like we are trading out this wool down here. Then, yeah, they're trading the wool from us. Look, uh, this one here, Lyconia, in uh, the Antigonids. This is really interesting. So this, this is why I like this system. It's just kind of interesting to see what everybody's, you know, what all the provinces are doing. And you can really get clever with the trade system in this, right? You know, you can be like, okay, I'm going to go and take all the provinces that are, you know, selling flax for, or producing flax, for example, or whatever. Maybe you've got a, a natural trade research would be a better idea. Like, for example, I, if you take all the iron around, then anybody who wants to be producing you know armor and weaponry they're going to have to be buying it from you and if you're the only you know if you're the only place in the area that's got it you're going to be making a killing it's really really cool it's a really really nice interesting trading game Alrighty, let's carry on yeah i'm interested to see where we can go with pontus next Let's see if we can take some of these uh, Hellenic uh, coastal provinces and then we'll try to hang on to them and set up some trade routes, basically. So we'll we'll get some trading trading stations up, see who's in the in the local areas of the places that we take to be able to trade with, and then wait for an opportunity for a you know kind of a major invasion. Okay, a new decision is available. Gather food. Produce more food or or instantly gain food from the land. Uh let's just have a look at this one. Okay, well this is gonna cost us money. The food output of our regions will increase by 15%, but we will lose 10 loyalty points. These effects last six turns or cost, uh, and cost some money per region. Or we can requ uh, requisition food for the army. 
Uh, for six turns of loyalty, we're lowered by five points. Um, yeah, but you get food per population point. This is kind of interesting. Uh, also, we've got buildings to develop focus. Uh, regions will should reshuffle some of their building proposals with an emphasis on harbors, walls, or workshops. Okay. That's a region, regional decision there. And we received a progress token. Okay, so we're actually climbing up in the progress. Let's just check. How are we doing for food? I think we've got loads of food coming in, really, haven't we? Yeah, I'll just, I'll just skip on that decision. I don't think that's, a, that's not a regional decision. That's a, a national decision, I think. Yeah, gather food from the land here. The food output of our regions will increase by 15%, but we all lose loyalty. Uh, that's an interesting one. So, yeah, loyalty is kind of on the edge with some of them. 95, 80. Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't want to play that yet. We'll wait. Um, you, you can wait for the decisions. Okay, let's get these pirate ships together. We'll, we'll mix the second Pontus fleet, or merge, sorry, into the first. These guys have got to wait one more turn to get their effectiveness back. Okay, we're building this ranch here. Yeah, I'll keep I'll keep that as it is. I'm not going to micromanage the pops too much, folks, because I know it's not very exciting for you to watch. Yeah, like I say, um, I don't mind that. I like the option of being able to micromanage stuff, but um, you don't have to in this game. And I, I saw somebody making some criticism on Reddit, I think, where they were saying, oh, you know, the, it's not a very good game because you have to micromanage everything in order to be able to be, to you know, to have the optim optimal strategy. And I'm like, what does that mean? <laughs> what is the optimal strategy in this? You know, like, this is like a really complex game. How do you work out the optimal strategy? I suppose if you could, you could figure out, okay, well, you know, you want to get all of your population grown first, then go culture, then. Yeah, but I still think that I don't see how it would be that easy in a, in a game this complex to figure out the optimal strategy. You might be able to get a rough, you know, a rough optimal strategy. Like I say, just go for one building type first, but I don't know. It sounded like nonsense to me. <laughs> okay, no offense, by the way, for whoever is who said that is watching. I don't mean any offense. Okay, so here we go. Uh, we've got this Hellenic Independence. It's a marshal with a frontage of five. We've got 51 combat power. We've got a decent general and 14 units. We should win. Uh, we've got overwhelming force, but let's see what happens. Oh, look at that. We absolutely destroyed them in the uh, range phase. And it looks like we're doing pretty well on the yeah on the front line too. Yeah, you'll see, look, uh, these guys are experienced as well now, so they're also getting bonuses from this. Yeah, well, that was an absolute massacre. Okay, so we managed to take this, uh, th this particular place, uh, Olbia, which some major are probably not going to be very pleased about. Um... But this also gives us a little bit of, oh look, we've now dropped down out of the CDR ranking. So we've got to spend a little bit of time now, not at war. <laughs> Let's try to make sure that we don't, a corn lord, uh, sorry, we want to try to make sure that we're not going too far down that ranking. So we need to build some culture for a bit. Corn lord health regulations. Let's have a look at this one. Uh, corn law and health regulations like the Gaius Gracchus law often have the purpose of quieting the populace or, or favoring a prominent political figure. Still, the people often expected bread distributions or unrest would ensue. Sanitation works were extensive, in particular in the biggest cities in the capital. Okay. Oh, we don't have enough money for this decision here. A minor corn law, major corn law. This is going to give you loyalty bonuses. Uh, new health reg regulations. Each region with at least one health building will get a 5% health bonus for 20 turns. Or sanitation works. Let's just... Um, we're not going to make that decision yet. We'll wait until we've got a bit more cash. Okay, let's just see if anywhere's built. Okay, so the orchard's been completed here. What do we want next? Oh, we could produce wine, look. Now, do we... I don't think we've already got wine, do we? No. Wine is a good one. Um, I think it's used in taverns and things. I think we're building a tavern here, aren't we? Let's just have a look at this. Yeah, needs wine, trading required. Okay, this is going to be good because what that means is if we build wine, if we build a vineyard here and we get wine up, then we'll be trading wine between here and there as well. And if, we, if we're lucky, we can put a tavern up in all of our places, and then we're going to be getting the trade bonus from there. Because if you remember, you know, uh, you, you might be paying a little bit from the place that's taking it, uh, that, that is buying, but the exporter actually gets a profit. So you'll always make a net profit, which is really, really cool. Uh, yeah, so I think we want to do that, but let's just look at our other options first. 
so we've got the vineyard, we've got clear water, we've got the public works again, uh, we've got a palisade. All of these are really good. Um, all of these are really good. We've also got the furnace. Now we need, um, we, we, we're missing a bonus for coal here. However, this is another one that is going to create a trade, you know, this is going to create favorable trade for us. Uh, and this gives us, it, we're going to lose infrastructure, but we do get for six money and four metal. We don't need metal at the moment. Um, I, I, I am tempted to get the wine here from the vineyard. So I think we're going to go with that one. Uh, hemp field has been co uh, completed here too. Sorry for clicking on the wrong one there. Uh, so we've got the hemp field up now. Let's just go back to the trade, uh, the trade overview, and just see, just see what we're. Are we trading this out? No, uh, we are. I think we're importing in salt there. No, uh, yeah, we're importing in olive oil. Sorry. Have a look at this place. Uh, these are not. Uh, these are not importing or exporting anything. Oh, they are, but um, no, they are exporting wool uh, back into polymonia okay what do we want then we've got sanitation we could go for public works that will give us infrastructure and uh, you know the, the it'll help us to move through the region faster we've got the weapon depot uh, we've got a slave market this is really really good the only problem is this this one is it does increase decadence however um, you can gather and sell slaves so you can kind of redistribute your slaves out uh, we could also get a theater and we've got the orchard as well uh, this would be good for just getting more food. Which we will want eventually. Um, I'm a big proponent of building up population as quickly as possible. We can... Uh, look, let's just get one of our... One of our slaves working in the fields, and then we're going to try to get this orchard up in three turns. I might actually switch this over to uh, over to culture. Let's get some more culture up, I think, just so we don't slip down those rankings too far. Uh, this 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 region here isn't isn't good enough yet. What have we got here over in Olbia? Now part of the Pontic Nation. Uh, we've got the anchorage, the post, uh, the trading post. So the trading post, seemingly a humble building that can generate very large profits if local trade goods are available. Okay, so we're making one money just from the amber that we've got here. But if we could get furs, drugs and herbs and coral, we would get a whole bunch of extra money. Uh, this is just the first level as well. We can get other stuff here. Uh, the anchorage always also brings a little, little cash. I think we're going to need to get... Uh, flax food. Flax could be useful just for the food. Okay, it's going to take a long time, but uh, we are growing. A theater. Now, theater would increase culture. That might be good. Germanic convert. Uh, so we're at 33% Germanic, 33% Hellenic, 33% nomadic. Did we get a big decadence hit for that then? I thought this was. Yeah, this is not actually technically the same ethnicity at the moment. Okay, that's no big, no biggie. We just need to be a little bit careful now about taking any more places for a while, uh, because slipping down in the decadence, the CDR is quite severe actually. Um, I'm t we need food probably. Tempted to get the flax field. Now, is there any more flax around here? Where are we? Trade details. There we are. Yeah, we've got more flax around here. We've got figs. Cattle, horses, hemp. Yeah, there is there is already plenty of flex around here. Now I don't remember quite how it affects the trade prices if you've got more than one. You know, if you've got multiple ones in the region. I think they, then it's down to the trade acumen. If you've got higher trade acumen, then it's you that it sells your products basically over your rivals. So if you uh, you want to be able to build, you want to build your trade acumen as much as you can with various decisions uh, and buildings that come up. Uh, so that you know it's your 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 goods that are being sold over your opponents um obviously because they've got the inferior products i like to think okay uh let's go back to this decision food three infrastructure now this would need salt which we'd have to trade we haven't got that 
But yeah, let's get the flax field up first since we're getting some food in. Okay. And these guys, they're going to stay here for a few turns. Yeah, we've got plenty of food. Uh, Seleucos rejected our offer, by the way. Um, Obia has been added to our nation. We took it from the grip of Hellenic in independence. Okay. So this is now part of Pontus, and we can probably set it up as some kind of trade station. Remember that we also have this interesting regional decision. Where are we? Uh, where we can implant trade settlements. This is a really good one. So anywhere basically where you've got these kind of uh, trade, you know, on the coast, essentially, you can build these trading stations. Really, this might be a good way of taking places that aren't Hellenic, because I don't think this will count towards conquest or the decadence ranking. So, you know, we could... We could grab this one, say here, or maybe one of these, like in Iberia or Armenia. Um, preferably one with a bit with the highest. Uh, you'd want one with a high population, uh, but that is going to take 40 manpower away from you, which is quite significant, and also 175 gold. We can't play that one for a while, but that's a nice little decision just to get you some free, just some free stuff. I'm all about the gib for free. Uh, okay. These are all kind of like crappy populations. I wonder if we could... Yeah, maybe we try and raid uh, Bosphorus here. Let's see if we can get some cash. Okay, let's roll the turn. Yeah, I think we've I think we've built everything else, haven't we? Double check. Yes, there we go. Okay. Okay, so those those pirate ships have gone up there. Yeah, what, the only little gripe I've got really with this game at the moment is how when the turn is processing, it kind of slows the game down a little bit. Okay, so we've we've climbed back up 13 points into the top uh, the top third of the CDR. Under the wise rule of Lysimachos, Pontus civilization is progressing. Progress tier reached. Okay, uh, so this is because we started actually putting more culture production uh, into place. Hygris Scythia saw an invasion by Pontus. The local militia was beating, uh, beaten and some pillaging occurred. Okay, so we got a whole bunch of money from that. That's a great job. Um, let's carry on raiding here. Now we do have a Bosphorus fleet. I'm just going to stay there. I would like to get Bosphorus if we can. Now, they do have an army here. So that might be... Yeah, they might be beaten, actually, thinking about it. Perhaps we move... Let's move here instead. We'll see if we can get this... Uh, province now loyalty's quite low here let's uh, we've got germanic citizens let's get them working in culture okay they're not gonna they're not gonna do anything in culture for a bit <laughs> okay okay maybe we get we try to get a uh, theater wow this is gonna take a long long time so maybe we just we we just skip this for the time being yeah, these guys aren't going to be producing any culture for us. Yeah, it looks like this is actually converting over to Germanic culture at the moment. All but Pontus saw an invasion by Sarmatia. The local forces crushed the invaders. Uh, so we actually fought back. There is a, a new population in region. Oh, beer. Okay. Um, I think what we want to do... Yeah, we could put these on retaliate. Uh, this will actually... So... The commanding general will mount a retaliation expedition against any hostile region. You won't capture the first hostile region entered, and will return to the previous region instead. Doing so will cause no will cause an effectiveness loss. Okay, so yeah, basically, if you get attacked, uh, you'll you'll enter the region. I think that's what it means. And you, but you don't capture it; you just move back. So this is this is a little mechanic they put into the game to stop it, so that when you wanted to fight people, you you didn't immediately take every province off them. And I like that; it's really cool. Okay, uh, you received a new region decision, implant trade settlements. Okay, we've already got that. Clearwater in Pharmacia has been destroyed. How did that happen? Are they rioting? Or is it just, uh, was that just something that happened? Uh, the Anatolian Plateau is again the victim of a magma movement and Pharmacia was stricken by an earthquake. Ah, okay, so we lost it because of an earthquake. Uh, so we'll have to get that back. Uh, meanwhile, we're working on the ranch. Let's try and get that ranch up as quickly as possible. Get those delicious cows out. Um, okay, now we've created a tavern here. So you will actually see again, if we go to the trade details, yeah, we should be, um, we're actually, look, this is costing us money. We're spending nine gold, uh, nine gold every turn. 
or nine nine cash um, exporting uh, importing sorry the the wine that we need for this tavern but we're going to be getting it from here once this one goes up so yeah we've got three turns until that vineyard goes up nice if we could rush that a little bit quicker but I don't, I don't think I will. I think I'm going to keep people working in culture just a little bit. Just so that we stay in this top um, top uh, third of the CDR. Okay. What are we going to build then? We've got the salt mine. That's interesting. Yeah, this is going to give us two food and four money. Uh, a single nearby structure would produce more. So this is saying that the salt would be... We actually need the salt. Where, where is that one, I wonder? Yeah, it's here. So this would actually make our garum shop make more money. So getting salt, that's a good one. Uh, we've also got the salt house, which needs salt. <laughs> um, we've got the wheel maker, which gives you infrastructure. Also unlocks war chariots. We've got the armorer again. We've got the userer. This increases decadence kind of slowly, but it also gives you nine money and a 15% commerce bonus. Uh, this is pretty useful. This is pretty useful. You know, 90... Uh, uh, What's that? Fifteen percent commerce bonus would be pretty helpful. Uh, we've also got the Ora uh, the Oratian Tribune gives you the loyalty bonus. We're all right with loyalty here. Um, five food and eight health's really nice, but we'd have to import the uh, the salt. But the health bonus would be nice. That's going to help crop population growth. Hmm. I think I'm going to go for the... I'm just going to try to get my own... I'm going to try to get my own goods up. Now, obviously, get, um, doubling up on the goods that are being sold around you is only useful to you, providing that you've got a decent trade acumen, okay? So if you've got poor trade acumen and you've got somebody in the region with a very good trade acumen, that can be a problem. And you can actually check their trade acumen as well. These guys have all got three, look. These have got one. Uh, these have got seven, look. This is Thracia. Wow, they've got really, really high trade in Byzantium. So yeah, um, obviously they're going to be getting their... They're going to be making loads of money because everyone's going to be buying their stuff from them. Uh, okay. I think we're good to go. We probably should think about moving this army back at some point. I might just leave them here for a few more turns. I don't think we're under any, any threat from anyone back in Pontus. Ah, oh, man, again. Time just flies when playing this. It really, really does. Like for me, uh, if for players like me who just like kind of fiddling over fine details, <laughs> like uh, I've heard it, you know, when you when you play these kind of spreadsheet games, I, I don't like calling them that because there's nothing, this is nothing like a spreadsheet. I mean, I guess there is some spreadsheety things in it, but anyway, people call them spreadsheet games, right? When you when you're looking at a lot of lists of information, and uh, <laughs> like in the Total War community, they kind of call it number wang, and I don't know if you know what that is, like. Yeah, answer us in the comments if you know what number wang is. But if you know what number wang is, <laughs> then you'll understand why people use that term to describe games where it's kind of just you're just kind of like pushing like almost arbitrary numbers around, and it's just pointless. You know, I don't find it pointless. I really like that kind of thing, providing that it's meaningful in the game. <laughs> Otherwise, it just, just become number wang. Uh, yeah, again, I, I I invite you to Google what number wang is. If you're if you're not familiar with British comedy, you'll probably not know what that is. Okay, a new decision is available. Religious ceremony. Raise loyalty and un reduce unrest with religious buildings. This might be a good one. Okay, we can add a feast to the calendar. A new day to feast and celebrate a divinity or an important event will be added in the calendar so that people can rejoice and rest. Probably another one will be removed or abandoned in a few years, though. <laughs> Gives a 5% loyalty bonus for 12 turns. If the region has no religious building, like a cult site or temple, productivity is slightly lowered. Okay, so we're going to get... This This actually makes... Yeah, you get less tax income. Uh, sanctification decree. A pious, admirable religious man is elevated to sanctity. The resulting celebrations are sponsored by the state. Gives a 10% bonus to regions with at least one religious building, like a cult site or a temple. Okay, we don't really get any of those. We've got the de uh, deification decree. A new deity is entered into the pantheon of the main religion. The resulting celebrations are sponsored by the state. Gives a 5% loyalty bonus to regions with at least one religious building. Again, yeah, so you need a religious building here. Uh, this just gives you a 5% uh, five loyalty bonus, but at the expense of tax income. 
I think I'm going to do this uh, because this might help the, you know, the uh, the loyalty here. Okay. Then we're just going to have to grow this population, and this is going to be the way to do this. Uh, we probably, yeah, we can't get, you can't even get anybody in doing culture here. Let's just keep growing the population. Um, mind you, saying that, getting the theater up might actually start making culture but well, that's going to be no growth oof choices choices eh 74 turns and 50 54 turns for the population growth um the problem is with growing the population here chances are we're going to be uh, moving to into germanic uh but then we're going to get more population at least alternatively we could put everyone into culture we'll get no growth or we could just put everyone in here, 25 turns, and then we get a theatre up. Might be a better idea, you know, than, than growing a Germanic, po a Germanic population. I'm not sure if that's the best decision, to be honest with you folks, but I'm going to go with it. Uh, despite the local defenders, Scythia was raided by Pont Pontus and some plunder happened. Okay. Let's get these guys raiding somewhere else. Uh, we could raid Thracia here, uh, Lismakos. Yeah, that's going to be a good one. If we can get that, we'll get loads of money. Uh, the health of the ruler, uh, Lizamakos, has degraded to average. And we've got a forage the land decision. Uh, that's pretty much it. Let's go to the next turn. And I'm probably going to end the episode there, folks, because, uh, yeah, again, I don't want another 50-minute episode. Uh, that kind of kind of tanked my views a little bit unfortunately with the way that youtube works it's really it's kind of a shame you have to you have to play by the stupid rules that the algorithm kind of runs with it's just the, it's just the name of the game sadly if you want to make you if you want to be successful on youtube you have to follow the follow their uh, the meta uh, okay guys i'm going to yeah we'll just save this for later uh, i'm going to end the turn and i'll catch you in the next episode take care